I'm Drew, and I'm an amateur model builder. I'm building a layout in my basement called the White River Line, inspired by the Frisco Railroad in the Ozarks. In a couple of my previous videos, I talked about the Down and Dirty Weathering Contest being hosted by John over at JC's Rip Track. Now they allow up to three entries into that contest, one in each of three categories, rolling stock, locomotives, and structures. My previous videos were on my entry for the rolling stock category, and in this video I'm going to go over my entry for the structures category. So let's go ahead and jump on into it. I found this old corrugated metal structure on Google Maps in the town of Chadwick, Missouri. Chadwick was once the terminal end of a small branch of the Frisco. I started by lifting the dimensions for the building using the techniques I laid out in my first video on scratch building where I built my mill. You can find that link above. Using these dimensions, I took a little creative license and made some adaptions to the building, including adding a lean-to, and by extending the warehouse portion of the building all the way to the back. I then set about cutting out pieces from styrene sheets. Once this was done, I needed to figure out the placement of the windows and doors. I purchased a set of windows and doors from Kitchy Train Group instead of building my own like last time. There are a wide variety of doors and windows in the set, and I was looking for something plain and humble. I cut out the holes for the windows and doors and glued them in place. I couldn't quite find what I wanted for the back door in the set from Kitchy, so I just built my own. I then set about doing the basic assembly. Scratch building requires a bit of spontaneity at times. I wasn't quite sure what I wanted to do on the front of the warehouse, but once I completed the rest of the construction, I added a few pieces on the front to roughly match the prototype. I'm going to build a door for the warehouse, but I'm not quite sure what I want to do yet, so I'll save that for later. One final piece of assembly here was to install a chimney. The kit from Titchy included a chimney, but it was too tall and a bit too fancy for this building. I cut off a bit from the bottom and filed it even. Then I've modified the roof to accommodate it. I'm going to have to think through when in the process I want to weather it. Some of the assembly is a little bit rough, but I wasn't too particular in some cases, because I knew I'd cover this up with corrugated metal. After a bit of research, I settled on embossed paper stock for the corrugated metal. I bought several sheets from an online supplier called Casey's Workshop. I'll have a link down below. My first step was to airbrush them with primer. Then I airbrushed them lightly and unevenly with a mix of dark gray and white. I then cut the sheets into strips that are 30 scale inches wide, which is kind of the standard size. To aid in cutting these strips as consistently and as quickly as possible, I cut a strip of styrene to use as a jig, eliminating the need to measure for each strip. As you can see from the prototype, each side of the building weathers a bit differently. The pieces on the right side of the building show only a bit of surface rust. I decided to weather each strip individually before applying them to the model. 
I started with the wash of dark gray and Russian Air Force dark green. This is kind of my standard murky, dirty wash. Then I added a filter of white gray to the top and the edges. I didn't water this filter down as much as I usually would. I let it dry for a few seconds and then used a dry brush to feather it out. I then applied the strips to the model using plain white glue. I had to cut the panels to fit around the windows and doors. In hindsight, I probably should have waited to install the windows and doors until after I put the corrugated metal on. After completing this process on just one side of the building, weathering the pieces before I installed them, I decided to change tactics and glue. I switched to this quick setting glue used in scrapbooking to get better adhesion. I used the following process. First, I roughed up the styrene to get a better surface for adhesion. Next, I applied the glue using a toothpick. Then I applied the corrugated metal panels, doing the necessary trimming around windows and doors. I let the strips of paper hang over the edge of the structure rather than trying to cut them exactly right. After waiting some time for the glue to dry, I then trimmed off the excess paper. I worked my way around the building. Before moving on to the roof, I need to take care of a few things first. I don't want to risk bunging up the eaves while I do other work. First, I worked on the chimney. The prototype has some sort of sealant around the chimney to make it watertight. I used some modeling putty for this sealant. Next, I weathered the chimney. I used ivory airbrush paint for the mortar and let it flow into the gaps. After waiting a minute for it to dry, I lightly wiped away the excess from the surface. Then I painted a few bricks with fire red. I painted the sealant with a couple of coats of dark gray. Then I dry brushed it with some white gray. Once this was dry, I added a dark gray wash, then 50-50 with water, paying attention to the top of the chimney where soot would collect. After the chimney, I worked on the flat portion of the roof. Or as I wrote, roof. I'm not sure what happened. The prototype had corrugated metal for this roof, but I wanted to break up the profile a little bit. I started by painting the inside edges and the tops of the walls black. I accidentally grabbed a gloss black, but when I add a matte varnish, it won't matter much. I also painted the side of the other portion of the building gray to somewhat match the corrugated siding. It won't be seen much with the eaves of the sloped roof extending over the edge, and I don't think the effort to apply the corrugated panels will be worth it. For the tar paper, I'm using simple black construction paper. I cut strips in four scale feet and after roughing up the styrene with some sandpaper, I applied the construction paper with white glue. I then used an X-Acto knife and toothpick to distress the edges of the tar paper. To begin the weathering process, I applied a wash with white gray, making the edges of the tar paper a bit lighter than the rest. I then used concrete with a light hand and darkened up selected bits of the edges and dry brushed the rest. On my recent trip to Missouri, I was reminded how much moss and algae there is everywhere. A roof like this would have a bit on it. I used a dark green wash on the edges to hint at a bit of algae, using it a bit more heavily on the lowest portion of the roof. I then stippled on a mix of part green and Russian Air Force dark green and German black brown. Finally, I lightly stippled on a highlight of green sky.
One final detail was a drain for the flat roof. My next step was to build some doors for the warehouse. I decided to go with some carriage house style doors. I used styrene sheeting and 2x8 dimensional strips for the framing. To simulate wood grain I roughed up the surfaces using 80 grit sandpaper on the panels and steel wool on the strips. I used an awl on the styrene sheets to scribe lines for the boards. Then I began the weathering. These doors would get the full brunt of weather, with no awning to protect them. So I started by simulating weathered wood. I laid down a base of desert sand primer. Then I airbrushed a coat of concrete. Using light brown and sand gray and a mix of the two, I painted individual boards. I added a dark gray wash to bring out the wood grain and the scribe lines between the boards. Using sand and a very fine brush, I added highlights to the boards, mostly focusing on the edges. I then added another wash of dark gray to selected areas. Once this was dry, I applied some chipping medium. With this, the underpainting of these doors is complete. Before painting these doors their primary color, I wanted to add some trim to the doors that were already installed on the model. I want to paint all of the doors, windows, and trim at the same time, so I don't have to mix paint more than once. I used 2x4 scale styrene strip for the trim. When it was time to paint, I mixed up some white with the tiniest bit of black brown, just to bring down the brightness of the white and warm it up. I was pretty rough with the paint job on the warehouse doors. I'm going to chip a lot of it off and the rough paint job should add to the final effect. Painting windows, trim, and doors after they are installed is pretty tedious work. Another reminder that I should have waited to install these details. I used a bit of concrete and sand gray to simulate paint chipping, but I didn't give it much attention. Just a hint here and there should be enough. To do the chipping on the warehouse doors, I wet them a bit and rubbed the white paint off with a toothpick. I varied the pressure I used to get different levels of peeling paint, and I'm pretty happy with the results. Now it was time to weather the corrugated metal siding. I started with a wash of my dark gray and Russian Air Force dark green, my favorite mix for a wash. I used a bit of rust wash on the front of the warehouse and on the right side. The rust is heavier here than on the front of the store and on the left side, probably due to the roof overhangs and the direction that the rain comes from most often. I then used a bit of rust pigment. This gave a heavier rust effect and gave the ability to have a bit more variability on the panels than I could get from just the wash. I also used the rust pigments on the less weathered areas to give a hint of surface rust here and there. Finally, I used a white wash to the edges and tops of the panels. On to the roof. I cut the strips to size using a bit of styrene as a jig. Using the same technique as before, I applied them to the roof. These panels have the heaviest rusting. I mixed up some chocolate brown and some burnt red, but it was a bit too maroon. So I added in some orange rust. It would be hard to call my technique dry brushing here. It's a bit heavier than that, 
I used a sparing amount on the brush, but didn't empty it quite as much as I would as if I were dry brushing. I failed to use my dirty wash here like I had on the other panels. And after the dry brushing, I wasn't happy with the gray of the panels. So I added this wash after the rust. Finally, I applied the white wash filters to the edges like before. I then began working on the porch roof and the awning for the back door using scale lumber. 2x6s for the framing and 4x4s for the posts. I dyed them with India ink heavily diluted with isopropyl alcohol, like one part ink to 15 parts alcohol or more. They don't need to soak long, just a minute or so. I used some craft glue to assemble them. I made an awning for the back using the same techniques. Before putting on the porch and awning, I added some porch lights. I applied the corrugated metal panels with CA glue. I did a bit more distressing and I was a little sloppier with their application, making a couple of them peeled up at the corner. I took a moment before weathering the porch and awning and applied the warehouse doors. I cut out a bit of styrene to add some bracing to the back and to give me a little more surface area for gluing. I left one of the doors slightly open. I think this will add a bit more action to the scene. I used basically the same techniques for weathering these panels that I used on the roof. I decided that the corrugated metal could use a bit more grubbing up so I decided to add one more application of my dirty wash. And with that, I'm going to call this part of the job complete. I added the glazing to all the windows. A final reminder to wait until the end to install these items. Putting the glazing in place was a bit awkward. I'm almost done here, but I wanted to add one final detail. I grabbed a bottle of Kloss Medium and added some hints of standing water on the flat roof. For now, this job is complete. I'm going to need to add a concrete foundation, a front porch, and a back step, but I'm going to wait to build that until I install it on my layout so I can custom fit it. Thanks for joining me for this video. It was fun to play with a few new techniques. This is the first time I've worked with actual wood strips. I'm especially happy with these warehouse doors. I've struggled with using the chipping medium in the past, but it really worked well this time in my opinion. You can find me on Instagram and Facebook, and those links are in the description below along with a list of some of the tools and supplies I use. In my next video I'm going to get started on some bench work and discuss some of the progress I've made on my track plan. Please leave a like and subscribe and join me next time as I continue building the White River Line.